Today's episode is brought to you by Roman. Yeah, man, they got these swipes. Head on over to GetRoman.com slash RoguePE. You'll get $10 off and free two-day shipping. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I, 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 you see like in the old old movies, they get the, the rhythm going where it's like ding, 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 ding. We didn't get anywhere near that. <laughs> why, why, why was that? I wonder. <laughs> Jason Murphy, I can't believe it. Our time machine worked. Where are we located, Jesse? <laughs> You were at the Jordan Bachman Pioneer Farms in the 1890s. Oh, good. Oh, good. For a second there, I thought, I thought it didn't work. <laughs> Woo! We're on a quest to create the Mjolnir of bottle openers. All Where right. do we begin? First thing you begin with is a fire. Yep. We've already got that started. Just remember, make the fire hotter by doing this. How hot do you want it to be? Roughly down inside, you want it pretty close to 3,000 degrees. You want it to actually be at the base of the fire a little hotter than the melting point of steel. That way it will heat up the steel quickly and efficiently. So 2550 degrees Fahrenheit is about where it starts melting. And nowadays, the modern way to make anything would be what? You would have a cast and you would just liquefy the steel and pour it in there and you, you cast it? Like There's what? actually three ways. Okay. The first is casting, like what you're saying. They will pour it into a mold, let it cool, cast it and they can cast steel now, not just iron, like the old days. The second way is what they call drop forging. Uh, you've probably seen wrenches that say drop forging. Yeah. Them. That means they took a big bar of hot metal, stuck it in something, and they literally brought down this huge weight, slammed it into it, and it impressed it and made the shape. The third one is standard fabrication. Either they cut away what they don't need or they cut pieces and weld them together. Oh, like machining? Yes, machining and welding. One of the ways we use to describe it is welders are like cabinet makers. They cut pieces up and rejoin them back together. Blacksmiths are like sculptors. We start with a solid piece, shape that solid piece into what we're looking for. So what's our first step in making this bottle opener? Well, the first step is actually we have to work with the piece of steel. This bar of steel, I've got one for you, one for me. I've already marked it. We're going to start heating it up. Can I turn the crank and make it hot? Yes. What, yes. what you're going to do is you need to turn it in counterclockwise. Oh. Got the it. fan actually has a direction. Okay, Okay. got it. What we want to do is work it into the fire here, start getting it hot. Just go ahead and give keep it on air. Going, keep on going, keep on going. Not that fast. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you want to keep it kind of slow. I want to keep my airway open. When you're doing this, we are not melting the steel. We're bringing the steel up to a very close, high temperature to melting. We want it to be solid, but it's what we call a solid solution. It's still relatively soft. We can then hit it, shape it, and get the shapes we want. Basically by treating it like clay, except we want to keep our fingers so we can't use our fingers. We have to use an artificial thumb called a hammer. I know Brian just wants to crank this like some... That's all I want to do! Are you kidding me? Demon. They're like, <laughs> hotter, okay. hotter! Stop. What we want to do is we want to let it soak in just a hair of the heat. It feels like we should have gloves on. Why would we not be holding it having gloves? Gloves are actually a bad idea in the forge. Gloves don't let you know how hot the piece of steel you're picking up is. However, the steel we're using is so hot, it'll burn through most gloves. You pick it up, you're holding it, your hand starts feeling warm. Okay, your mind goes, okay, put it down. So I put it down. Problem is you're still burning because at that point, the steel's not burning you, the glove is. Got it. So you actually are more likely to get burned with a glove. Whenever we're in here, we just kind of check it. Okay, it's cold. So it's it's weirdly safer to develop <laughs> low-grade paranoia that all metal things are ready to burn you at all times. That is actually correct. Yes. Safety is scary. <laughs> yeah, there is no, nothing in this shop that is safe. The only safety in this shop is between your ears and in your hands. So you guys are in trouble, just fair warning. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna do is a process called fullering. Fullering is just making a dent top and bottom in the steel it's gonna isolate the two halves of the bottle opener. One half of the bottle opener is the ring mm -hmm. that we're gonna use for the bottle opener. The other part is the handle. When we work on the ring, we don't wanna affect the handle. We want that to stay separate. So we do what's called isolating. And that fullering is isolating the metal. This is called a spring fuller. It is an ugly little bent piece of metal yeah. that works quite well in letting us put a dent top and bottom in the steel. You gotta have it brushed off enough to be able to see the marks I made a moment ago. If you note, you can see the little mark. Oh, yeah. That's what you have to do is you need to find that mark, turn it up, make sure it's centered. Oh. Right there. Make sure you keep it in line. 
See what I mean? Okay. Okay. It's, that it's, is all you have to do. Forgive me, what does that accomplish again? How does that separate the two parts? It will actually isolate the steel just enough so that we're less likely to affect the handle whenever we're working on this part. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, smash it flat, put it back. Are you ready to try this? Ready, ready. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna hover my hand. It feels like I can touch this. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a thing. Okay, uh, first you have to brush it off. Yep. So go ahead and lay it down. I'll brush it for you. Ah, I have Make an sure assistant. You can see your marks. Okay. And then, can you uh, see the marks? Yes, I can. Okay, slide it in. Yep, yep. Ready? All right, hit it. I'm blacksmithing. <laughs> is that what you is that hit part of it? Is, is you say I'm blacksmithing too? Stop. Turn it sideways, look at it. There you go. Look at that! I I did this. I forged. We forged! We are mightier now. Roll credits, because I'm a modern rogue. Right back in. Okay. I mean, technically, you could use that to open a bottle. <laughs> yeah. I guess for the rest of the process, it's just a game of, well, I need it to be softer. Let me throw it back in the fire. Now it's exactly. softer, and now I can shape it. The next thing we're going to do is called a little bit of cleanup. When we turned the farrier's rasp into the blade, Chris called that part cleaning up Brian and Jason's mistakes. <laughs> um, if I need to do that, I will be happy to do that, but I'm, I believe in you guys. I believe oh, you can do it. See, that was Chris's mistake, is he didn't believe in us. <laughs> oh, they, was that it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. By cleaning it up, what I'm referring to is simply taking it, bringing the ends in just a little. Now let's get a little warm. And then hammering it on, on it to the end. See that ragged piece is now a little flatter. I'm just trying to round it a little bit. The reason I'm rounding it ahead of time, if it's rounder, it'll be easier to expand it out into a ring than rather than a blocky shape. So. All right. All right, I need to stick mine back in. See, I'm confused right now because on the one hand, this is kind of fine work, which we've joked about is not Jason's specialty, but on the flip side, it's hitting things with the hammer, which is kind of Jason's specialty. <laughs> okay. okay. Do I need to brush it off again? Uh, no. And see, you got it. Now, turn it up on edge, right on the edge, and just start, lift this up just a little bit, right here. Oh, okay. Okay, and then hammer like this. Ah, oh, like right on the yeah. corner. Okay, now do the other side. That's all you gotta do. Whoa, You're don't gonna, hit oh, anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Just a little bit. Okay. okay. Slide it back in. All right. The next part, we're gonna put a hole in it. We're gonna do that by punching. This is a punch. You know it's not round. Yeah, I, why? We want to keep as much of the steel involved in this as possible. Okay. The steel is longer than it is wide. So to get a big hole, I'm gonna punch it in a slot. Then we're gonna drive something into it to spread it out and make it round. You're gonna to have to be careful, okay? So I'm gonna help you with the punching. I'm gonna let you do the hitting. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get to hit it. However, I'm gonna hold it and put it in the right spot for you. All right. Make sure I've got a good mark. Yep. It's called a witness mark. There we go. Now, did you just put the water on there because it looked really cool? <laughs> nope. You have to quench it, otherwise, you mess up the punch. Aha. Oh, for a second on the punch, I thought, why is the punch so hot? <laughs> and then you saw that the orange. <laughs> and it was just paint. <laughs> and you can see, oh, now there's great. a hole in it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Nice, clean little hole. That hole is what we need to go on to the next step. You got the steel good and hot. Are you prepared? Yes, sir. Hit it hard. Whoops. Hard. Okay, you gotta let me get it back. Oops, sorry. You gotta let me get it back see, in line. Because every time you hit it when it's off, we get a bigger mark and it's hard to line it up. Hit it again. Okay. 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 
We're going to have to heat it back up. Failed. It's all right. Failed. Sorry. There was progress. Yes. <laughs> progress was made. Yeah. When you're holding the hammer, yep. the closer you are to the head, the more control. The farther you are from the head, the more, more power. power. Got it. Stop. Doing much better there. Okay. Stop. Okay, a couple more. Stop. Okay, did you hear the difference on the last couple? Oh yeah, it started to ring. That ringing means we've reached that point. Now this, we're gonna have to be a lot more careful about. Okay, so lighter or? Hit it hard. Let me get it lined up. Again, hard. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah! Now, hit the metal itself, not the punch. There we go. We made a hole. Have a hole. Hey! It's a tiny little hole. Now we're gonna make it bigger. Okay, and so uh, what are the tools that we use to widen that? Well, you call the tool a drift, mainly because it drifts through. Okay. We're just taking a series of pegs that, that they, we yeah. put it in and just it widens everything widen. out. Just okay. Stretch it out. It's getting a little warm. And then, you can see how much bigger the hole oh, is. Oh yeah, there. huge difference. Which part do you want to hold? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go, sir. You want to put it over the hardy hole. Okay. There you go. I don't want this to be a cause a problem. Yep. One thing you can do, come in here, work that corner, walk it across like that. Oh yeah, and just using your drift as the pivot. Oh, got it. Okay. Keep it. Yeah. And the good thing is, it lets the drift loosen up, so now that you pops, can get. That's a that's a fine hole we punched. Now, quench the drift. I'm gonna try now to do we've exactly got a nice that. Big That's hole. awesome. There you go. Look, I could do this. There we go. In the hole. Lost your heat, so pull it out, balance it there, and rotate the Oh, steel. there we go. There that makes go. a lot more sense. Rotate the other way. There you go. There you go. Now, when you start okay. to visibly Stop. lose your heat, is that Go when ahead, you want to put oh. that back in? Okay, got it. Yes. Is that that's when, when you it goes switch? to black? You want to stop. Okay. Okay. The good thing is you left a little bit of work for Jason to do. Oh, ha. there you go. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. This one's yours. Okay. Pull it out. Put the drift in, and get to beating on it. It's very hot. Go ahead and put it on the edge. Always hit straight in. Just rotate the steel under the hammer. There you go. Nice. Okay, stop. Go ahead and set it back in the fire. All right. What is that? That is called a right angle bit or a right angle horn. See how big it looks now. Yeah. Right. And that is all of the drifting we're gonna need. I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Turn it upside down. There you go, that way. Just beat it. Keep going, keep going. Okay, stop. There we go. Hey, hey. Look at nice that. Nice big hole. I don't want to jinx it, but you kind of looked like you knew what you were doing. I mean, it felt dangerously close. Right. <laughs> Light it back in the fire. Roger that. The next thing we're going to do 
is we're gonna thread that hole onto that right angle bic and we're gonna clean it up a little bit. Okay. So, basically you thread it on, flip it over, Notice that it looks much more round. Yeah. Looks yeah, great. Wow. Like this. That's just some, just some, you're not hitting it very hard, are no. you? No. It should be hot. Test it and see. Okay. Go ahead. Pull it off, flip it over. I guess that's the nice thing is that you, you get kind of, I don't want to say unlimited chances to fix what goes wrong. I mean, at some point, does the metal just get too fatigued to work with? No, the, me the metal won't get too fatigued because we're heating it up. Fatigued would come about from putting stress into the metal. Every time you're heating it up, you're actually relaxing that stress if you let it sit in the fire for a little bit. Got it. You're gonna do the same thing. All right. Oh, don't hit the side, hit the end. Oh, hot. Hot! Yes. Very much so, actually. There we go. Yeah! A lot more around. All right. We've done about as much as we can with the bottle opener part. Now we gotta make the handle. Then we'll come back and finish up the bottle opener. This is the part where you get to try cutting something. With a sword? Ha! Cut steel, we use a chisel, okay? Now to use a chisel, we have a slight problem. To use a chisel, you gotta have a hand for the hammer, hand for the chisel, and hand for the steel. Look what I'm missing. Right. We can turn the chisel around, Put it into the party uh -huh. hole. Oh, I thought I said party hole. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna use the brass hammer because if you cut through too far with that one, mm -hmm. you'll scar up the face, you'll dull the cutting surface, and oh. problems happen. We've got a lot of metal that we're gonna make that handle out of. We want enough to be able to have room to beat on it, so we're gonna take a little extra. So roughly about two inches. What I recommend is start on the side, strike it hard, lay it down, that puts a mark there, and then rotate it up carefully, making sure you're lined up. You'll note I've cut in from all four sides. You're gonna hold it up, I'm gonna grab a hold, we're gonna grab a hold, and break it off. Wow, oh, there it is. So it doesn't have to be super precise on that first one, but everything after that has to exactly, exactly. match all the way around. Exactly, okay. you're lining up the scoring line all the way around. Right. Hit it hard, one more. One more. Stop. Oh. Go ahead. Stop. 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 Okay. Just like that. And All right. get it back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> That's still hot. Yep. This is a process we call drawing out for drawing out steel. Note that I'm careful about where I place it, and I want to hammer straight down. Then I want to come here, smooth it out, and hit some more. So you're basically just taking flattening, stretching, yeah. and lengthening. We're squeezing it in this way, keeping it from getting an I-beam shape by flattening it here and bringing it in. This is the point where we're not going to go any farther. You want to get it to about here, which is a little about five-eighths of an inch, half an inch. That's about the thickness you want for the handle. Okay. However. It's very thick. We don't need it to be that thick. We need it longer so better handle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw that out next. Yeah, it's time to beat on it. Let Jason up. Yep. All right. <laughs> yep. We yeah. all have our special gifts. <laughs> yeah, you have to be a little more careful when beating on it. Okay. okay. These tongs are flexible on the end. That means you can get a tighter grip. It'll hold. If there's vibration at this end, it's not gonna jar your hand loose. It's just gonna shift a little. Okay. So you're gonna keep a better grip with this pair. All right. Turn around, go to the anvil. Like so. But, yep. Come back to about right here. Okay. Okay, and just hammer straight down. Just keep trying to hit that.
Ooh. That's okay. Just keep going. Stop. Damn. Now I want you to hit it flat. Stop. These are actually manipulators designed to be used with power hammers. I think it's just his hammer's better. I, I, I it's, it's mean, a, it's a, it's that, a better that hammer. is a bigger hammer. It's a better hammer. You have that much. <laughs> it's not the 19 years of experience. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I mean. See, the problem is I'm not, I'm not worthy. I, can't, I literally that's, can't pick it up. It <laughs> Which of you wants to do the peening? I'll, I'll peen. Okay. Brian, I don't know what peening is. Brian's, Brian is a huge into peen. But I, like... <laughs> I think you meant that a different way. <laughs> <laughs> when you're looking at the hammer, that's the face. Yep. That's the peen. Okay. That's why you call this a ball peen hammer. Ball peen. Yeah. The peen is a ball. Got it. One of my favorite descriptions was started by Mark Asbury. That's where I heard it first. It's called the cow patty theory of blacksmithing. We're talking cow flop out in the field. Imagine being a little kid, run up, leap into the middle of it. You know what's gonna happen, splook in every direction, right? Right. Technically, that's what happens when we hit steel. If you took a two foot square of plywood, ran up and smacked that down, every bit of it moves at the same rate outward. Right. That's like using the face of the hammer. If you were to have a real fit of insanity, grab your mom's mixing bowl, run out there and smack it down in the center, the very center is gonna move out rapidly. But the rest of it's just gonna move kind of slow. That's like using the ball on the ball peen. Um, we also have rounding hammers, which is more like using a serving dish, okay? So you get very, very rapid, aggressive movement in the center, but it dulls out as it goes. Okay. If you were to take a two by four, smack it down into it, it goes to either side, but you really don't get any on you. Mm -hmm. That's like using the cross peen or straight peen or diagonal peen, depending on what you got. Okay. The reason we use this is we get a lot of movement this way, very little movement this way. Well, what we want to do with this handle is we want to stretch it out, but not widen it. We're going to hold it where it's over here and hit it with the peen and walk down it. And that's going to stretch that handle out and make it thinner. Okay. I said, now I'm just thinking about cow poop a lot. Yeah. <laughs> hold it across like this. Start here. Note I'm hammering about the same spot, but I'm moving the steel away from it. Got it. Then come back here. Now you're back to the flat side. And I want to smooth it out a little bit. But you're using the, the flat end of the hammer rather than the peen end. Yes. To flatten it, you use the flat. To peen it, you use the peen. Okay, so you just swap it over when you rotate. Yeah, yeah okay. correct. I got you. Now, we're going to do one pass on one side. Okay. Heat it up again, do another pass on the other side. Cool. And it just becomes second nature. You're just doing it by feel, basically. Yeah, I've reached a point where I don't even think about it. I just know and my hand adjusts. This time, don't be quite as aggressive okay. with the hammer blows. Okay. You want to hit it with authority, but you don't want to dig it all the way in because you don't want to make a big dent. Right. It's hard we to get those We don't want to break out. it in half. Take it. Pull there it to right go. about there. Start peening. Start right up, up close hit. to the edge. Okay. Yep. Keep going. You got to pull it. Yep. Yeah. Now, push it back. Do it again. Oh, I'm getting it now. Yeah. Do it again. Start at the top. There you go. Good. I'm going to get mine next. So. And that's about at the length we're going to want. How much thinner? Wow. Okay. That gives us a nice handle. Do you want it smooth or you want texture? I'm, I'm fine with texture. Stop. More attention in the top. You've got the back thinned out enough. Okay. Go back. Smooth it out. So we got a lot of thickness right here. Yeah. I'm going to get that stretched for you real quick. Perfect. Yeah, one of those hits, I definitely felt a piece of scale land. And, oh, really? And, I, and it is that kind of thing where it's like, you know, like it's burning me, but it goes away. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's not even worth reaching over. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Can we pull it back at all? No, let him just work Leave around on it. Okay. Do one side, just kind of hammer down the length and just smooth it out. Okay, flip it over, do the other side. You always want to hit both sides. 
All right, good. Hey, he said good. No backsies. <laughs> you said it. It's on camera. <laughs> Breaking the corners essentially means putting a 45 degree angle along the corner just to keep it from being sharp in your hand. Oh, so we're just barely taking the edge off yeah. on this. We're not hitting it very hard, just enough to take the corner off. What I want you to do, pick one side. Well, this is the texturing we were talking yep. about. And just beat it up. But you want to do it when it's at a red heat or colder. Otherwise, you go and you mess with it too much. Yeah, I like that. Overlap the hammer blows, and it gives it a nice, kind of a rock-like texture. Last thing you want to do, even though it's nice and cold, is you want to come down one last pass and just kind of smooth out the edge. Go back, tap it, tap it. Now we've got a nice textured edge. Remember, this is the top. Okay, tilt it. There you go. Now flip it over and look at the other side and see if there's any more 45ing yeah. you got to do. Right. Now you want to just peen it. Right. And just kind of walk it all over. A little bit harder. You're wanting to make a little dents in the surface, but you're not wanting to draw it out or anything. Now, look at the texture, see if you're happy with it. Yeah, that's coming together. Looking all right. all right. Yeah, right? Turn on the edges and just kind of go over it once on the edges and kind of smooth it out a little bit. Okay, that's it. You didn't lose many, much of your corner, um, 45, so don't worry about that. Okay. For this part, we're going to use wolf jaw tongs. Keep in mind, these are not flexible reins. They're a little harder to hold. You're going to feel that twang in your yeah. hand. But they give you a lot better grip in the long run for this part. Bottle opener is not perfectly round. It comes up, and then it's kind of ovaled almost flat on the very end. Mm -hmm. That's so that it doesn't reach all the way over the cap, it just reaches in the middle of the cap. It also has a little tab that catches the underside of the cap. Mm -hmm. That's what we gotta do now. That's some fine detail work there, it seems like. It's actually not as bad as you think. Okay. We have a lovely tool for that called a punch. For this part, I'm gonna ask you to hold it for me. Okay. okay. Because it's a lot easier if you hold it, hold the bottle opener, and I get to work on the actual piece. Okay. Don't lay it on the anvil until I'm ready. Okay. You re Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, take it. Okay, set it on the anvil. What we wanna do is we wanna get about half and half, right about there. And you can see, now I have the tab. See what I mean? Nice. Just that quick and easy. Now I want to do one last pass right along here. Move this back out. Come over here. Ah. You guys about ready to do the punching? Yes, ready. sir. Now when you hold the punch, you want to hold it so that about two thirds of it is on the metal, one third's off. As you hit down into it, it's gonna squeeze that metal out. And sometimes it even helps when you go in there, you angle it this way just a hair. Okay. That way when you hit it, you push it toward that bit, mm -hmm. then the next one hit it flat. Okay. There we go. There you go, hit it good and hard. Now, level it out. Just go down. Okay, stop. Got a good tab. All right. All right. For the next piece, it's relatively easy to do. It's just hard to hold. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Huh. Okay. You want to oh. bend it down, and then right on the end. Straighten it back up, just like that. Got it. See how now it comes yeah, up like that? Yeah, kind of an S-curve thing. That's what you want to do with this part. Pull it out, you're going to hold it, brace it on your hip, yep. hammer straight toward it, Okay. and what it's going to do is it's going to take it from the round and smash it down. Okay, got it. Then you turn it over so it's face down, tap it so that that end goes down, mm -hmm. bring it over to the other side, and just kind of take that last little bit and twist it. Got it. You want to go off the edge of the anvil. Oh, there you go. There you go. Straight toward you. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. 
Keep going. A little more. And that's looking good. All right, like that. Right. Now, flip it over. All right. You there want to bounce it right there. There you go, okay. Stop. Now, flip it over. Yep. Come to right here. And then flatten and straighten that, up. that up. Stop. Pick it up and look at it. Yeah. Hey. Right. It looks like a, a thing. We, we made a thing. Yes, you did. Last touch is all we want to do is we want to get a little leverage on this. So just kind of bend it over like this. And then take this, clean it off, kind of scrub it a little bit. What this is doing is actually scraping all the excess scale off of it. It's also smoothing the surface just slightly. And we have- That looks great. We yeah. have a bottle opener. Quench. Let's set it right there. Your turn. Okay. okay. Hold it down at an angle and just hit the tip and bend it over. Right about there. Grub the heck out of it. Scrub it hard. I mean, scrub it. Yeah, it does get that kind of nice polished look to it. All right. Oh man, that is awesome. Quench it. Dip it down in the water and move it around. Oh, it hissed. Yeah. Is it staying wet? It if is. If it stays wet, it's cool enough. You have a bottle opener. Yeah! <laughs> well, of course, I uh, will be the judge of that. We need <laughs> bottles. Tell us the bottles. Gentlemen, we All have right. moment of truth. Yeah! <laughs> Dude, this is great. Jesse, where can people learn so much more about blacksmithing? Right here at Pioneer Farms in the blacksmith shop. We teach basic blacksmithing classes, advanced blacksmithing classes. After you get done with the basics, we'll teach you knife making, axe making, tool making, and decorative metalwork. Uh, I heard axe making. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I guess who's coming back? <laughs> Be Dude, happy this to is have you awesome. Back. I've already named mine. To you, Jesse. Boom. Salud. How come everybody wants to talk about sex in metaphors? That's kind of my favorite thing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. When the rocket ship finds the quasar. <laughs> when, when two adults want to make sweet, sweet sandwiches together, and sometimes one of them has the sandwich almost made, and they're afraid if they finish their sandwich, the other one will only have half a made sandwich. I feel like this is a very specific metaphor, <laughs> but keep going. Oftentimes, both parties want to have their sandwich complete at the exact same moment, and sometimes there's a bunch of tricks that predominantly males use to delay their sandwich completion. The cliche is about thinking about baseball. You've heard this one, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I don't know anything about baseball. Okay, I had the same thing, but you know what I do know a lot about? Did you start reciting your fire-eating thing <laughs> in the middle of coitus? No, but if I want to delay completing my sandwich, I will name all of the video graphics cards I can think of. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, the NVIDIA TNT1, uh, uh, the, the 3D FX Voodoo, Voodoo 2, uh, the, the Metrox <laughs> Mystique. Like, these are all circa 2000 video cards. <laughs> Roman has figured out a better way to delay the completion of your sandwich. They got these things, uh, they're, they're swipes. Oh, uh, imagine swiping down the countertop on which you use to make sandwiches. You gotta clean up your cooking and prep area. There you go, and, and chemically, it delays the completion of your sandwich. We're killing it with this. this Metaphor is this flawless. Is and you don't have to think about graphics cards or baseball. And it doesn't interrupt the ability of your partner's sandwich to be made. We're almost there. We're almost there. They're called swipes. And if you go to getroman.com slash rogue PE. Rogue PE. Rogue PE. You get $10 off your order, free two-day shipping. We did it! Effective metaphor. Not a good creepy. One. Sandwiches are ruined for me. <laughs> and video cards, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sandwiches, video cards, and baseball. <laughs> Go ahead and hang on to the hammer. Okay. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> so you're supposed to stand with a blast hammer. Yeah, yeah. I think it feels right. It's funny how just suddenly a hammer's in your hand and your chest just puffs out Actually, and you stand up straight. This is a good way to hold it too. Ooh, oh, that is good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Honey. But <laughs> I don't I don't feel like I'm doing it right. Maybe I gotta level up first. 